Hi again. So in the previous video we saw that if we have a power equation it means it's an equation where all of my uh, terms that contain the unknown have the same exponent and in the end it can simplify to some coefficient in front of my unknown that has a specific exponent equal to a different constant and eventually when I solve this I divide both sides with the coefficient okay then the idea in the end is to take the root of both sides but the nth root whatever the exponent is that's the root we'll take on both sides and there was just one little note if n is even Okay, we said we should take a plus or a negative. Now, another problem we have when n is even, something else I need to mention when n is even. Okay, if n is even, but k over c is negative, so let me write it like this. k divided by c is smaller than 0. That means it's negative. Then there is no real solution. Okay. There is no real solution. So let me give you the most basic example I can think of. x squared equals to negative 1. Uh, Basically, it comes down to the fact that there's no real number that we can think of that I can square to get negative 1. We know that whenever we square a number, or any even number for that matter, anything that is to the power of an even number will always be positive. Well, if I say anything, I mean any real number. In maths, we actually, if we take the, the square root now on both sides, square root on both sides since the square root we must do plus minus this answer is plus or minus the square root of negative one in maths because this number doesn't exist in reality it's not a real number you can't take the square root of negative one okay we have in maths what is called the imaginary number we think up a new number and we it is the square root of negative one and we give it a new value but this is an imaginary number. It doesn't really exist. It's not a real number. And though it's the solution to this equation, it is not a real solution. It is an imaginary solution. So don't worry too much about imaginary numbers. No, don't worry at all about imaginary numbers for this course. What's important for you to understand is that whenever I have a power function, sorry, a power equation th that seems to be less than zero, in other words, negative, then you can immediately conclude no real solution if that exponent is even. Okay, I hope that makes sense. And the reason why is because you can't have a real number that has an even exponent and still be negative. Okay, so that is one part. The next part I want to show you is just SAMDOB Sam Dob applied to power functions and I want to specifically use an example where I only have unknown values and this is a common one you might recognize it as the future value formula if you don't don't worry we'll get to that Okay, and let's say I am trying to solve for i. I want a new expression. I want i on his own. And we said that to solve a value in an equation we use SAMDOB. So first we get rid of what is subtracted and added. And we have to remember the last thing we're allowed to do is the bracket. So I can't do anything yet inside the bracket. So I ignore the subtractions and additions inside the bracket. And I look outside of the bracket. There's no additions outside. I'm trying to solve for i. 
the next thing I do is multiplication or division. I see that the bracket that I'm trying to solve, I'm trying to get the bracket on its own, um, is being multiplied with P. So what I'm going to do is on both sides I am going to divide with a P. Divide with a P on both sides. So now on the right hand side I've got left 1 plus I to the power of N is equal to F over P. And at this point I want to show you that we actually have a power equation. Why? Because I've got my unknown in a base, okay? It's not the only thing in the base, but it is at least in the base with an exponent. So how do I solve it then? Well, I need to get my power alone, which I already have, equal to a constant, or in this case, F and P represents constants, okay? And then once I've done that, I take the square root, not the square root, the nth root on both sides the nth root on both sides. Now if n was even it would also get a plus minus in front and if f divided by p was negative and n was even then I would indeed um, have no real solution but let, let, let's for the moment just assume it's odd just for simplicity's sake. Now what happens on this side is that this n divides that n so I've got 1 plus i in brackets to the power of 1 because the n's cancel. What that means is that the brackets are useless. If I've got 1 plus i and in brackets to the power of 1 it just tells me I've got 1 1 plus i factor and well I don't need to write the brackets then. So finally I'm inside the bracket on the right hand side I've almost got i on his own. On the left hand side I've got now what looks like quite a complicated expression. The next thing I'm going to do now is restart SAMDOP. Okay, once I get inside a bracket I restart SAMDOP. I try and get rid of anything that's subtracted and added. Here I see, um, so in other words terms, here I see I've got a term the term constant 1 is added to i so to get rid of it I will subtract it simply from both sides. So 1 minus 1 will just be 0 and and this is what I'll have. n is f over p equal, uh, sorry, minus 1. Minus 1 is equal to i. And there I've got it. There I've done it. I've solved for i using some of the power function um, capabilities that we learned in uh, the last few videos. I hope this helped you. Uh, this specific technique is really going to help if once we get to financial mathematics um, and any other uh, compound growth type scenarios. Uh, so good luck in understanding it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.